Hello everyone and welcome to That Time When. Today I'm going to be telling you a story about that time when an F1 world champion was kidnapped. It features none other than Juan Manuel Fangio, a five-time F1 world champion who dominated the first decade of Formula One racing. Now, let's take our minds back over 60 years. In the late 1950s, the Cuban government was keen to promote the country as a tourist destination and so arranged a sports car race on the streets of Havana, Unana. Many big name drivers of the day, like Sterling Moss, Juan Manuel Fangio and Peter Collins competed, with Fangio winning the first event in 1957. In February the following year, the race was run again, but this time it didn't quite go to plan. Let me give you the backstory as to why. By 1958, the atmosphere in Cuba was very tense as a group of communist rebels led by future Cuban Prime Minister Fidel Castro was threatening revolution. One of Castro's top men, Faustino Perez, not related to Sergio Perez of course, decided that a good way to draw attention to their cause would be to disrupt the Cuban Grand Prix by kidnapping five-time F1 champion Juan Manuel Fangio and preventing him from racing. The night before the race, Fangio was on his way to dinner at the swanky hotel he was staying at when a man in a leather jacket approached him with a pistol and said, come with me. Fangio initially thought it was some kind of joke before realising the man was deadly serious, at which point he was escorted to a waiting car and driven to a secret location. It cannot be confirmed whether or not he was put in the boot, but we decided for story's sake he was. Unusually for a typical kidnapping story, the perpetrators were thoroughly apologetic for having to take him away and repeatedly explain that they meant no ill will towards Fangio and merely wanted to draw attention to their political cause. The kidnappers quickly made it known that they'd taken Fangio and the man himself was allowed to send a note to the press confirming that he was okay. Immediately, the Cuban government sprung into action to try and find the star of their race. Searches and interrogations were conducted throughout the night and airports were heavily monitored in case they tried to take him out of the country. As the sun rose, there was still no sign of Fangio and the decision was taken for the race to go ahead anyway, with Sterling Moss taking the win. But while all of this was going on, where was Fangio? The kidnappers had moved him to a couple of different safe houses throughout the night to try and throw their pursuers off the trail. But it's not like he was tied up in a cold, dark basement with a bag on his head. Instead, he was afforded all the amenities he might have expected from his hotel. A comfortable room, all the food and drink he wanted, and even a radio so that he could listen to the race, though he did decline that. Castro's right-hand man, Perez, even paid him a visit and reassured him that they'd let him go after the race. And that's exactly what they did. Fangio was dropped off at the Argentine ambassador's home with a letter apologising for having kidnapped him, as well as an open invitation for Fangio to return as a guest of honour when Castro's revolution had been completed. Fangio was rather unmoved by the whole ordeal, said he had no hard feelings towards his kidnappers and merely chalked it up as one more adventure. It paid off handsomely for Castro too. The kidnapping had made headlines worldwide and drawn attention to the cause of the revolution, with Fangio even being invited onto US talk shows to talk about his experience. Fangio eventually returned to Cuba in 1981 on a business trip with Mercedes-Benz and met up with Perez and Castro. And on Fangio's 80th birthday in 1991, he received a birthday message signed off from your friends, the kidnappers. What a delight. What an interesting tale. Apologetic kidnappers. What story would you like to see next on That Time When? Drop us a little message in the comments below.